All right, in this video, we're going to refactor our existing code so that it's more usable uh, throughout our system. We're going to create some helper functions. So as I said, if this is our magic sauce we're doing over and over again, we might want to uh, make these into functions that we can use elsewhere. So um, one of the, this is something that we're going to do over and over again where we get a random number. And if, um, if it's one thing, it, we, we're going to have just two choices come out of picking a random number, either uh, a one or a zero, a true or a false. Basically, given two possible outcomes, give me a random one. Um, so let's create that, and we're going to call it um, random select two. And this way, we can use this whenever we want throughout our code. And here, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to kind of copy paste what we did up there. Um, well, let's rewrite it just to be clear. Our, our rando is going to be something between 0 and 1. And uh, if the rando is... Okay, darn it, let's just... This is silly. Do this. Then if it will return true, and down here will return false. So what this means is that um, no matter what, we're going to return a Boolean value. If that Boolean value, um, or if rando is, is above 0.5, it'll return as true, and if not, it'll return as false. So how might we use this? So this is done. Um, we can say, and we've, we've gotten rid of this, right? So now all we have is num shapes. So we can say, if random select two, if it's true, right? So that's, if you just put this here, what it's going to do is return a value, which means it's gonna replace whatever this is. So it's either gonna come back as true or it's gonna come back as false. It just became a total spaz there. So if it's true, we can say num shapes equals sides and else num shapes equals sides times two. Right, so basically the exact same thing we've done already, but we've uh, refactored it into its own function, which means we could use it anywhere. So let's try this again and make sure it didn't break anything. And sure enough, we are perfectly fine with this. This all looks good. So uh, I'd want to introduce to you another way of writing this that's a little cleaner. Um, when you set something, you can ask it um, to evaluate a condition and then set it to whatever the result of that condition is. And what I mean is this. So what is this is called a ternary, ternary operator. It's really hard to say. Ternary operator. Yes. So if you want more, um, you can look in here. Mozilla Developer Network is always a great place to do it. But basically, you give it a condition on the left side of this um, question mark. And then these are the two choices it has for returning a value. So what we're saying here, let's get rid of, well, let's leave it here for comparison. What we're saying is, let's just look at this side of the equal sign. Random select two question mark asks, is it true or is it false? If it's true, it will return whatever's on the left side of this colon. If whatever this is is false, it'll return whatever is on the right side of the colon. So it's the same thing here. We're saying if whatever's inside of here is true, do whatever's here. If it's not, do whatever's here. So you could really replace this with the colon and replace this with the question mark. And it's the same thing. And at the end, we are no matter what we're doing, we're going to be assigning the result to this num shapes. And that's what we've done here. So this is just a shortcut. We're saying assign the result of whatever's here to num shapes. That result is dependent on the return value of random select two. It's either true or false. If it's true, go to the left side. If it's false, go to the right side. That is a ternary, ternary, ternary? Jeez, that's hard. And I speak English as a first language, kind of. There we go. So that's a nice shortcut that we can use whenever we want. Uh, what else do I want to show you here? Um, ah, so we're going to be choosing a random color from the palette over and over again. So why don't we make that a function as well? 
Um, let me give ourselves some room here so you can see this a little better. Let's call this get random from palette. Long but clear. So it's kind of the same thing. We're going to get a random number. It's going to be the floor. Why don't we just pull it from up here? Um, the floor between zero and the palette length. And then we can just return this. So instead of setting it to a variable, we'll just return the whole thing. So here we might say we're going to get rid of this. Don't need that. And we're going to just return the result of get random from palette. Cool. So this should just set it for us. We've cleaned up our code here. Uh, it makes it a lot easier for us to use these functions over and over again. Let's console.log out our stroke color just so you can see it working. Okay, so here's a color. It's hard to tell which one it is. This is a color object, but it's got uh, 255, 52, 154, and that is equal to here. This is our pink. Let's run it again. Uh, that looks like it turned blue. Yep, so 40152, it's the same as our blue. So it's working. So we haven't written any new logic. We've just refactored our existing logic to be reusable throughout our system. And we're going to continue to do that. It's good practice that any, any functionality that is, exists in your system that will be used in more than one place should exist as a separate function that can be called anywhere. And that's exactly what we've done here.